looked at when we were looking at that website were all functions. That was a function machine. There was no way to put something in there that wasn't a function. We before we uh, before you get going on everything here, we need to know what a function is. We're going to write a definition that we're going to look at some pictures and think about what a what a function is and what it isn't. Um, a function is a special relation, special type of relationship. A special relation between two. I'm going to put quantities between two quantities. It could be a special relationship between two things, even if they weren't numbers. Most of the time what we're dealing with is numbers, so I'm going to put quantities, but it could be two things. Okay, the only, the only condition or the only rule is where each input, and I'm going to put in brackets here x, each input has only one output. Or in other words, y, okay? X and y. <clears throat> the ones that you've got down here, when you put into this this rule right here, if you put in a two, I don't know where my one went here. Um, if you put in a two, you multiply it by four and you add eleven, you get nineteen. You don't get nineteen or something else, right? 19 or 25, there's only one single number that comes up, okay? Anytime you put two, if you put two into that machine um, on the on the website a bunch of times, you're always going to get the same thing. That's what makes it a function, if there's only one single value for any input. You can make up rules where, not the ones listed here, but you could make up a rule that says something like uh, x equals y squared. If we had a table for that, x and y... This is not a function because if you have something like uh, x is 4, you might say that, well, if this is 4, what does y have to be there to get to get a 4 over here? What does it have to be? 2. 2 squared is 4. But you could also have, what other number could be squared to get 4? Negative 2, right? It could be negative 2 squared or positive 2 squared. Here you have the same x value but two different possible y values. If you looked at that on a graph, if you had those two points on a graph, they occur exactly one right above the other. If you, whoa. Um, not sure what's happening there. Let's try that again. Uh, if you create a graph and you put that point on there, four, two is there, four, negative two is there. If this is four, that's two and that's negative two. You have two points. You have that point and that point. They're directly one right above the other. If you have two points, one that's... If you draw a vertical line and it hits two points, it's not a function because that means there's two possible outcomes for the same input. You can only have it where there's only one choice for each number. Okay. On the next page are some pictures uh, of a bunch that are functions. Okay. There's a bunch of functions... There's a bunch of non-functions, things that are not functions. It says, what do all the functions have in common? Let's uh, draw a line here. And hopefully we can move this line around. If I, if I look at each of these things that are functions, they, they talk about what's called a vertical line test for a function. If I take this vertical line and move it around here, Okay, if I put this on any one of these functions, let's actually make this bigger so we can see it. There's all the pictures in my vertical line. Uh, if you take this vertical line and move it anywhere on any one of these, this one down here only crosses the thing once. There's no place where the vertical line crosses it twice, which means it never has a place where it has two y values for the same x value. This one, same thing. It only ever touches the thing once. Or this one only touches the thing once. Or this one, right? Only touches the thing once. Whereas uh, if you look at these ones that are non-functions, some of them, like this one down here, if you put it on this uh, bottom right-hand graph, it crosses a thing. Like when the line is there, it crosses a bunch of times, right? It crosses one, two, three, four, 
three, four. This particular x value, whatever that is, has four different y values. If that were in a table, if this was two or something, your table would say two gives you three, two gives you one, two gives you negative two, and two gives you negative four, something like that. That's not okay. That's not a function. All right? If you look at the other ones, it's the same thing. Okay? For it to be a function, it has to pass what's called the vertical line test, as in it has to, you have to be able to, uh, you have to be able to draw a vertical line and not have it touch the thing more than once. Okay, that's just a simple visual concrete thing that you can uh, that you can use for a function. That's how to tell from a graph. Okay, from a graph you have to be able to put a vertical line and it has to only touch once. All of these ones, the vertical line, at least one place would cross more than once. Even this one, it doesn't look like much, but it'll touch those three points all at the same time, which means it's not a function. Okay. From a, that's from a graph, from a table, because there's a bunch of different ways you can represent a function, right? Or a relation, you can use a table. From a table, the way you can tell these are not functions is, well, this 3 gives you 11, or 21, or 31. That's not a relationship. If you're not sure what you're going to get for the same input, it's not a, not a function. Computers can't work this way, right? It might seem like they're working this way. Sometimes, hey, I did this, and this is what happened, and then I did the same thing, and something totally different happened, right? Something else has gone wrong. Computers have to be set up that if you put this in, this exact thing's going to happen, right? They have to be functions. It's harder to tell from this, which is a set of points, but if you look carefully at it, like um, 12 gives you 10, but 12 also goes with 14. That can't be a function then. Okay, whereas all the other ones here... They are, whoops, um, all these ones are functions. When you look at this, it can be this way. You can have a bunch of different x values that give you the same y value. What that's going to mean is it's going to be a horizontal line, right? If you try and gra draw a graph for that, 11 is 3, and 21 is 3, and 31 is 3. If you're ever not sure from a table or numbers, just draw the thing if you want. That's a horizontal line. It doesn't have to pass a horizontal line test. It has to pass a vertical line test. Okay, that's what a function is. We are going to get good with, hopefully, with working with what functions are. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about is something called function notation. Function notation. Uh, I'm going to stop this and then start again. If you have a place, you have a little bit of space at the bottom there to write something down about function notation.